Saturday morning, animation is dancing ponies and singing sponges. Saturday night is their freaky f up cousin. Buckle up, boys. What is this place? Animation Domination High Def. A late night block of brand new shows. Axe Cop. I'll chop your head off! And High School USA. Hey, gang, where's Brent? Brent's dead. Your weekend just got a whole lot weirder. ADHD. Saturday's late night starting July 27th on Fox. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. When you came And that music can yes. only mean one thing. And that is Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another after show on AfterBuzz TV. I'm JC, and this is True Blood After Show, season six, episode six. Do you feel me? But before we go any further, let us wrap around the table and introduce ourselves, starting with the lovely gentleman to my left. Hey guys, what's up? Scott Moore here. Another great show. Looking forward to it tonight. And across the table. Hi, I'm Sarah Stratton, but I'm just so excited by who's sitting next to me right now. Yes. <laughs> it's Chloe Noel. Oh, yeah. that's right. We all know Chloe Noel from her seasons on True Blood, playing yeah. the lovely Emma, <laughs> and she's ready to fire. She just got back from Comic-Con, and she's here oh, in the yeah. studio tonight. Woo! Thank you I'm so, so excited much. to be here. We're so We're excited so to have excited. you. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, and of course, we also have to give it up to the man running the ones and yes. twos. Woo. Our very own Warlow himself, Stephen Lemieux. Hey guys, how are we doing tonight? <laughs> We're good. We got a lot of action to get through first, but what? we've kept you up kind of late, so we really just want to talk to you and find out all about Emma and what what have you been in? First off, you just got back from Comic Con. Heck yeah, I did, and it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> of course, I mean it's Comic Con, and everything there's sci-fi and awesome and. Horror and it's awesome. And I love that stuff. Wait, 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 wait. Was it awesome? Yeah. I think a little bit. It was awesome. Yeah, just... Whoa, awesome. No, that's. And we want to hear about what you dressed up as and yeah. what you did at Comic Con. I dressed up as Bimo from Adventure Time. Yeah. I took my regular show T-shirt and I had like this like Rigby hat from regular show. And then today, that's right. Today, <laughs> right I was that. Emily the Strange. Who Which is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I know. She's um, this little 13-year-old girl, and um, she likes black, and her very positive message is do it yourself, think for yourself, and be yourself. Which is really, really good. I'm sure you it would is. be a great Emily. I'm sure you just fit that role right there. Uh, well, I she's see very, like, boring, bored, and of course, I'm, like, happy and cheerful, so <laughs> it's a little bit of a struggle to be here because every five minutes I'm like, <laughs> this right. You've got so much energy, and, and that's what I mm -hmm. want to find out. How do you ch how do you draw that? How do you channel that in your portrayal of your character in True Blood? Because Emma's, you know, she's kind of had it a, a bit rough on the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's it like? First off, what's it like being a part of such a cool show like True Blood? It's awesome, and my mom <laughs> totally watches the show. And when we first started filming, the one time we got to go inside Fantasia, and my mom was like. Ah! <laughs> And so, like, totally freaking out, and I'm like, mom. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's really cool. But I don't know the show, so it's not like, oh my gosh. So right. So yeah. we do explain everyone watching at home, and of course, every chat roll, all, mm -hmm. everyone watching at home live. Hello, and of course, if you're not watching live, make sure to tune in on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, OneCast. Comment. Let us know what you Ooh. think. If you have any questions for Emma and the crew, let us know. I'm I'm gonna get on the chat roll here in a second, but. I want to ask, mm -hmm. okay, what was it like? Did you get to interact with, like, any of the wolves and, and, and things like that? Like, because they have the actual my wolves. My wolves? Yeah. My yeah. wolf or 
the other wolf because oh. there's multiple. We want to know. Well, all there's of it. like <laughs> Elsie's and Martha's, Martha's, Martha's wolf, and then there's my wolf. So which one are you talking about? Mm -hmm. We want all the details. Yes, we want. But first, okay, we, no, we got to start though with <laughs> the lady of the hour. We want to start with you. Okay. We want to start with the little. So pop. I'm gonna give you a little like wolf insider. Ooh, I love um, that. It's a little wolf insider. I don't use. Um, I use a husky pup instead of a wolf pup because you know the like chew your face off <laughs> and so we don't want that and, that would be a bad thing yeah that would be a really bad thing so um i use a husky pup and there's been about seven husky pups that i've used that's a lot of that puppies is. i know and you, they gotta match them like they go online and look for the exact puppy from the first very first one wow uh -huh. Okay, so so, you, so she's giving us some secrets. Yeah, so. who knew? Multiple puppies. You're, you're giving also, us secrets. Okay. And also, for the other wolves, they actually use real wolves, and everybody has to go inside. Like, nobody except the trainers, because obviously they'll kill you. So, um, <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> Well, duh. I mean, they're wolves. They're wolves. They're wild animals. <laughs> what do you expect? And they're hungry. But, yeah, so um, they just train them with, like, steak and... They just get them to do what they want to do, and I think, I think it's really cool. So, I just want to give a little good job to the a little trainers. shout out to the wolves yeah. and, and the trainers, trainers too. and the wolves. Yeah, trainers have a tough job. Did you get? And how close were you? Did you ever get to them? Or have you gone? Inside a building through a dusty window. Okay. <laughs> so that's the closest <laughs> I've ever been because everybody has to, like, go inside. You cannot come out or otherwise you'll be, like, asked to leave. <laughs> it's, like, so serious. Fair enough. Okay, so we know we, wow. we've got the wolves. So it's very intense. I want to talk about yeah. you, about the what, what's it like? You know, you're the daughter daughter of uh, let's see of Luna Garza and Marcus mm -hmm. Bozeman. Mm -hmm. What is it like? You know, being there. You know, because we, you lost your dad a few on the show mm -hmm. a few years ago, and then now you're with Luna, and then we you lost Luna, so now you're with Sam, and now I know, I mean, as of tonight, you're, you're back with you're, your grandma. Yeah, I'm like, it's a lot going on. A lot to deal with. Heck, a lot to deal with. I don't with. even what know what, what's going on because, um, first of all, when um, when my grandma first took Emma, she's like, no, no. She's like kicking her and hitting her. Like, I want to stay with Sam. And then in season in episode five, I don't know what happened. Now she's crying for her grandma, and I, I don't get it. And you well, was, oh, go ahead, Alice. I was going to say, like, who do you want to be with most? Right now it's your grandma, but... Do you, you think you're going to miss Sam? Heck yeah, I'm going to miss Sam. I'm going to fight back And in this Sam. episode, and Alcide's like, oh, you can never come back to this town. I'm like, he doesn't have the authority to say that. <laughs> I mean. Emma's going to take control yeah, of the situation. That's right. I know. Well, Emma's that, like, mm -hmm. no, bro, I'm shutting this down. Here's how it's going to go. <laughs> I mean, also, let the kid make her own decisions. I mean, they kidnapped me, and I'm like, why can't, when I was reading the script for this, I'm like, okay, why can't I just say I either want to stay with Grandma or Sam? Let's figure it out. <laughs> and why can't, like, Sam visit even if I'm with Grandma? It's, like, either all or nothing. I'm like, come on, people. Well, that's what makes it interesting. They need to learn mm -hmm. to compromise. I know. They need to they Well, need I mean, they're wolves and shifters, and I guess those two are, like, extreme haters, which is <laughs> weird because... Emma loves Sam, and she's a wolf, and he's a shifter, which questions me that maybe I could be a shifter. I don't uh, know anything. I do not know I, anything. I, I tweeted that earlier. For I really, tweeted that earlier. Shifter. He tweeted I'm, that earlier. For real, I do not good. know a single thing. You sure? For really. Are you I never lie when I say for really. Okay, cross your heart. heart. There we go. Cross my okay. heart. Okay. All right. Really. <laughs> okay, but what can you tell us? Do you know if you'll be back? What's going to happen to Emma? Do you, do we know? I mean, I honestly don't know. I really hope so because I love working on True Blood. But um. Well, do you have a favorite story? Anything you can remember, like from your from your time on set? Any cool like interaction? Like, oh. who's the coolest person you've worked with? Would you say on this on the show? It's it's really hard because there's so many people. But worked with or met. Mm. We'll do, but let's do both. Oh, wow, she's yeah. good. Um, Very good. Wow, got it down The coolest here. person I've met. Like, 
Does it have to be on True Blood? Because I met a few cool people off of True Blood. This is Emma's show. Yeah, sure, whatever you want to say. Here, okay, uh, I, at the <laughs> Joe Maganello is like one of my favorite cast members of all time. He's awesome. Why? What? What is it about Joe? Um. Because he's so nice, and also because he's pretty cute. <laughs> I have to admit, but everybody knows that. Um, and he's actually, and like, like really good stuff. friends mm -hmm. with Pee Wee Herman. And, like, who would know? Because it's Pee Wee yeah. Herman and Joe Maganello from True Blood. Like, what? Opposite the track. <laughs> I know. Really. True. And random. I got to meet him at the True Blood premiere after party. And I used to watch that show, like, every single day. I knew every special there was. I knew every character. I knew every single line to that show. So actually meeting him, is it was really cool. And I do not get starstruck easily. Okay. But um, I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> when I met him, like, I'm such a huge fan of you. <laughs> and I, like, freaked out. Like my mom did, okay. like the first day when we actually met everybody. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. So and that's so exciting. I was gonna yeah. say, you know, your your, <laughs> your TV mom Janina did a movie with Pee Wee as well. Well, Paul Rubens. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she and, did. Yeah, so you may have to hit oh her up. Yeah, so, so see, cool. I'm just giving you a little inside information. After you're done with the interview, give Janina a call and go, Hey, girl, what's going mm -hmm. on? You hanging out with Pee Wee? What's up with that? <laughs> Hook you up. So, but but we do got to ask a few other things. Like, what's some other stuff that's going on outside of True Blood? What are you up to? Like some of your projects, I know you got that show on San Diego. You've got the yeah, kids I do corner. my weekly news segment where I talk about everything cool for kids, and um, I'm actually doing it after Monday, Tuesday. Uh, okay, so, I'm just saying you're, you're yeah. going to wow, you're staying yeah, very busy. Yeah, so it's yeah, and oh my gosh, that takes up like most of my time. Like my week has been insane. Like right now, there's like a million things going on in my head. Like we have to get this and this and this. And it is just so much fun working with them. I personally think that Fox 5 San Diego, they're a lot more fun than the people from Fox 11. <laughs> Not that I've met we'll, them. We'll, we'll cut that in post. Not Don't that worry I've about met it. Them. That's fine. No, no. But they're just awesome. Everybody there is so nice. And they're so cool. We're going to have to two in. So yes, Tuesdays, we are. Absolutely. Tuesdays on Fox Tuesdays 5. On Fox 5. So you've already told All us right. kind of who you want to be with. Maybe, you know, you want to split the time a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, work things out. What, you, who you like working with? Who's the coolest mm -hmm. person on set? Joe, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. All right, so I'm trying to think of anything. Do you have any favorite characters? Mm-hmm. Ooh, I mean, I love everybody that on True Blood because they're awesome. <laughs> So, uh, if I had to choose a favorite character, it would have to be Sam. Because he's uh, so nice yeah. to Emma and. Takes um, care of Emma. Yeah. Now and I wanna, I've seen most of his parts. Now, I want to know f how do you prepare to do the tough. Like, tonight was a pretty tough emotional scene. How do you get yourself ready to do something? Because, like we were saying earlier, you have a lot of energy and you're positive. How do you bring yourself to do something? Well, my mom a just sits scene? me in like a quiet place and we just talk about some th sad things like some pets dying or um mm -hmm. or just like thinking about like you're never going to come on true blood again and you're never going to see these people it just it works so was, you it's, had it's, it tonight yeah it's really hard to talk about because um we talk about such like terrible things yeah. And it's making me want to cry right now. No. It's okay, like, well, we'll, we'll stop that because yeah. you had us crying when we were yes. watching the episode yes. tonight. Oh. You really got to us. So definitely, but we want to ask you something before we let you go because we know it's late. Mm -hmm. We do something here called True Blood Trivia. Uh -huh. And every week we ask our super fans like a question about the True Blood universe. And there's a grand prize. Every week we select one person from our hat, our True Blood hat, of course. True well, Blood mm -hmm. hat. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and they're going to qualify for the grand prize, which is an autographed poster from all our guests we've had this season. Which, oh, of course, we're going to we're going to have Chloe sign right after the interview as well. Mm -hmm. So, last week's question was: We all know Tara's character, played by Ruth. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, Ruth Wesley. Sorry, but she wasn't the original person cast in the role. And we went ahead and asked everyone. 
who was that person? And ton we we got Look hundreds of entries. Full of entries there. Okay, People and the knew. correct answer. And I got to quit. Uh, give a quick shout out to Sexy by Nature. She actually ended up saying <laughs> that it was Bru uh, Brooke Kerr, which we that's the answer. But she also told me that she was one of the characters on Passions. And she's just, she went a step further. Oh, yes. and Extra detail there. Extra just giving you a credit. quick shout out, but your name is in there as well. But mm -hmm. we've got tons of entries. And of course, Chloe, we you want you to pick that winner. one name. Oh, so I'm going to yes. stir it up. Yeah, stir it just up to real make good. sure that everything's fair, you know. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't want any people angry. So here I go. And our weekly winner All right. is Danielle Kev. Danielle mm -hmm. Kerr? Kev. Well, I think it. It looks like Hev. You have messy writing. Kim. No, that's our in, it's writing. our intern's writing. We're firing the intern after the episode. That wasn't me at all. Okay, so it's actually Danielle Kerr. Oh, Kerr. I Daniel. think it looks like Hev too. Yeah, it does. Sorry, look like he, yeah, our intern Sorry. has horrible writing. Juan Carlos, you're fired. All right, so congratulations, you're yeah, this Danielle. week's winner. So, yeah. All right, so <laughs> Chloe, thank you so much for yes, coming back. Oh, of you. course, and if you never, if you ever need me to come back. Just call me up, and I'll be like, oh, heck yeah. All right, we'll be like, hey, girl, come on back now. We got you on mm -hmm. speed dial. But actually, where can where can fans find you? Can they find you on Twitter and whatnot? And they can find me on Twitter um, and on Facebook. I mean, okay. it's so crazy, both of those things, that I really can't do anything else. <laughs> she's busy. Well, yes, she's busy on Kids Corner, True Blood. And actually, she's a little bit of a stand-up comedian, so look out for that as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Yeah. Once again, thank you, Chloe thank Noel. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. Jordan. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, so, all right, guys, I want to just take a quick moment, and as we get Chloe off stage, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on on Fox Live tonight. Now, actually, on July 27th, animation couldn't get any weirder. Weirder. It's actually leave it to Fox because Fox is going to introduce ADHD animation domination. It's a brand new spanking new block of animation, and first. Out of the darkness, one hero will swing into action to save our heroes from the forces of evil. From the creators of Parks and Recreation and the mind of a five-year-old, go think, it is the new animated series Axe Cop starting Nick Offerman. Then, it's not over yet, the school is starting early, and when are we always like back to school? Have you noticed that? Well, you've never seen a class like this till now. It's the new animated series High School High, and it's all part of HD. HD animation domination. And this all starts on July 27th, late night on Fox. Be there. I will. All right. We are back. Okay, another round of applause for Chloe yes. Noel. Come on. Yes. Fantastic. Her energy is ridiculous. It's so much uh, so that Sarah is speechless right now. I'm just so speechless. Oh, there we go. I couldn't hear anything for a minute. You're speechless and you couldn't even she hear? She is the sweetest, most well-spoken little... Oh yeah, my gosh, I love her. She speaks better than all of us. Absolutely. She's she just comes in with so much energy, yeah. and I can see that she would probably be such a pleasure to work with on the yeah. set. Yeah, so much fun to work with. I just can't believe how much energy she had after Comic-Con, because I remember all the years that I went to Comic-Con, and by Sunday, I was like, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> and here she is coming in with more energy than all of us combined. That was amazing. So much fun. She picked it up so now, and of course, it is a, a very adult nature that we have going on mm -hmm. here. So we got to get into Especially. what happened tonight Ooh. on Do You Feel Me? Oh, my goodness. This episode, Ooh. I mean... Up to like 30% of it, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is this is all right. It's going to be yeah. another filler episode. Really? Then, That's how oh, I felt too. The, I would say the first half literally felt like it was one of those, all right, this is kind of boring. I was like preparing myself mm -hmm. to be like, guys, when's True Blood going to step up? Yeah. And then they took the words out of my mouth and they did. <laughs> the second half, and I was like, just whoa. like, oh, goodness. So, so it's so much. What did that be called the setup then? It's the slow. Setup. I don't know. I, I guess it is. Are you saying I should have expected it or something? I, all right, that's what you're saying. saying. It's easy for him to say that now, right? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Are you saying that my emotions aren't valid on the subject? Absolutely not. Absolutely. But I am going to say something by the series creator himself, Alan Ball, that whenever things look too good, they never are. Mm -hmm. And that's when he drops the hammer on you. And it happened so many times tonight. That's why the first yes. half of the episode was such a setup for what happened to, let's start with, Terry. I'm going to start with Terry. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see this coming. I thought, based on, the, actually, I take that back. Last week and prior weeks, I didn't see this coming. But I kind of felt it about in this episode before it happened. Like, as soon as he got, like, the clean slate and everything was good, then I was like, 
okay. Now I agree. When I saw that, I, I thought because I still thought what we were talking about before it would have been too easy for that to have happened for him right. to just have been killed that easily. Yes. What, 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 with the, what was the Justin? Was it the Hitman? Justin and, the Hitman, yeah. yes. Like, so I thought, okay, something's going to go miss here. So I didn't think it was going to happen. And, and even, I mean, I thought it was a great setup having uh, Matt, um, Holly's friend. I mean, it was hilarious. The mm-hmm. whole suburban uh, gay dad vampire showing yes. up and his Camry. And, you know, Holly's picking up the kids from soccer practice. The whole thing was funny. Um, but then afterwards, I thought, no, there's no way. I, I, even up to the moment where he shot himself, I thought maybe he's going to still be okay. So. Sorry. I'm sorry? He got uh, shot by... By... Jo- well, assumably, right? He got well, shot by... Jo- no, because... But, but, yeah, so that's what I meant. I he, meant when yeah, he got shot, He didn't shot, remember. But, but, yeah, he didn't remember that was going to happen, but I still thought he was going to be okay. Yeah, I didn't. I thought he was going to die, but I also thought still for a split okay. second that he was going... Um, that Arlene was going to die. I was getting so well, scared. Well, that's what I was going to say, too. It was going to be crying. someone else. I was like... I was like, oh, no, and now he's going to shoot Arlene, and now he's going to shoot Arlene. Oh, no. I just thought it was going to be someone else, or she was going to be in the way, and she was going to get shot instead of Terry. Like, I I still, right up to the very end, thought he was not going to be killed off. He was going to hit off the dumpster. Like, something was going to happen. How do you feel about it now that he has been shot, like, in the, (laughs) what is this called? The the carotid artery? Carotid, yeah. There's no coming back from that. So how are we feeling? Uh, We've lost Terry, guys. No, um, here's the thing. I mean, we, uh, as we've already discussed, we, we allegedly knew, lost him. <laughs> like we, we knew allegedly no, lost no, Luna. Terry's, Terry's. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know, but you know I what? don't believe. It. I, I guess because I want to be right. You want everyone to live forever. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> Here's the thing. Only me. Have you noticed that our show could be a little bit of the True Blood character killer? Think of it now. Not killer, but they go away. Janina. Mm-hmm. And sure. and now. Is is Chloe coming back? Is Emma coming back? I don't know. Don't jinx us. No one's going to come back. No, 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 right? no, because what we, are you saying? We've been trying to get t- Todd Lowe's been stuck on the tent. It's been a running joke for the last two seasons on our after show. We have, you know, we've had just a few like scheduling problems, and we always said, yeah, uh, Todd Lowe's stuck on the tent. So we'd like to hope we're putting it out there, Todd. We'd love to have mm-hmm. you come out here and let us know is is Terry gone or not? He's gone. I, I think Terry's gone. I think He's Luna's gone. alive. That's I my know. I personal wanna, I'm holding out that Luna's still alive as well. Maybe Terry could be saved by another vampire. I don't know. But it was fitting for Terry to leave this way. He left free of his sins. Think of it this way. He left happy. He was he content. He died happy. And I'm really glad True. about that. Because when we started this show, he was such like a kind of loony but warm character. Mm-hmm. So I was, like, happy that we kind of got back to that, back mm-hmm. to the original Terry, who obviously he's always been a little messed up, but he wasn't as paranoid and angry as he's been. Like, he's been snapping at Arlene and yeah. mm-hmm. having those freakouts, and I'm glad that that kind of got pushed away right before he died. Was it mm-hmm. fair that he got glammed? Because uh, this is going to get philosophical here. It's why, I mean, well, then why doesn't everyone get glammed and take their problems away? And your problems are what make you who you are. And the fact that he got that taken away, yeah, you know, and here's the thing. Rem- remember that uh, Terry gave Lala that um, safety deposit key? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that what it, What's in that envelope? What's in mm-hmm. that box? I guarantee that is something he, they put, it's like a little Easter egg oh, yeah. for season seven. Absolutely. What's in that box? For sure. What yes. If, I think it's, uh, Here's one. I thought, what if Arlene's a millionaire? Does that change? You know, what, if oh, you left I, I don't. I don't I, think so. I, I, I know. know, I know I, you're, you, you're, you put anything out there, but I, but I, going back to what you're saying about about being glammed, it's sort of not quite as extreme, but sort of like what people did back in, you know, old days when you were lobotomized and things sure. like that, where you kind of like you, you didn't have the decision, th- and that decision was made for you. Mm-hmm. But I think in in Terry's case, because he was carrying all that pain around, that it, and what ended up happening was it was probably the best thing for him. I mean, to not carry that that that. Pain and, st- and everything. Yeah, I'm happy with. that Terry was happy. In that sense. But my own personal views on like how glamoring affects mm-hmm. the show, sometimes I feel a little muddled about it just because like I liked it when they came up with the contacts that protected people from glamoring. Yeah. I was like, yes. Because when they like when Jessica glamored Hoyt because mm-hmm. he asked her to, it kind of just leaves me empty. Like I'm kind of like, okay. It's forgotten. Great. Like it's I, an easy out. I guess it's partially because in my own life, I'm like you don't like your memories and You've your been experiences. Sure. No, but your memories <laughs> and your experiences make you who you are. Exactly. Yeah. And you need that. Like you can forgive, but you can't. In my opinion, you can't ever really completely forget. And I don't think mm-hmm. you should be mm-hmm. able to. Mm-hmm. Um, so glamoring obviously defies that. Mm-hmm. 
it's sad it's because you know opinion. Todd has been a great part of the show and definitely to see him go in his in his growth yeah. he had uh, last season was his big arc and, mm -hmm. and his, he had a great story great storyline and now to see him go it's like and what we've been saying is now what's going to happen to Arlene and that storyline yeah. is she going to fade away what's going to happen I mean I don't know because for before we saw the previews and I'm trying to stay away from predictions yeah. I was scared that we were gonna lose multiple storylines from this episode um, just because we saw so many we saw Terry leave we've already seen Ar Arlene lose so many people is she really gonna find a new relationship so she could fade or she's gonna have to come into her own and have like a character arc outside of a man yeah like, uh, that's yeah. what she's been tied to for I, so I many seasons I think that seasons. would be a good one to have her be like powerful on her own and learn mm -hmm. to live uh, on her own yeah that would yeah. be that would be the best yeah. storyline i think for her and we've talked about in, in er, earlier episodes that according to the books she is a bit of a i wouldn't say she's a baddie or anything like that but mm -hmm. she is a, a she developed she's kind, i guess you could say there's a little bit of evil well could she turn now with the loss of terry like as a in like a hunt for justin you, you, and like a hunt like, for his killer type like a, thing uh, yeah, because, and like kind of go over the edge now, like after all the stuff that's happened, and just yeah, yeah. because it, I mean, losing your partner yeah. like that does crazy things to a person. So, what's going to happen to Arlene's arc now? That could be interesting. I mean, that is interesting. We've also, on the other hand, seen her connected a lot to the other Belfours, and like their relationship has strengthened. And with Andy's kids, and now mm -hmm. he has one left, and now Arlene has three, and her and Holly being friends. I think we could see also see some more tie in there. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, three way. <laughs> I wasn't going there, but I mean, <laughs> leaving that one. Whatever around. that relationship would be. <laughs> no, like, but speaking of Andy, are they related somehow. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, let's talk about Andy quickly and the naming yeah. of num daughter number four, who I still think he should name Terry. With yes, an eye. you did, and I was waiting for that actually because you had tweeted that earlier too. I was like, "Is that going to happen?" If it did, I was like, "I knew you had an in with some writer at the show because I was waiting." <laughs> I tweeted that out before yeah. the show. I was like, "It would make perfect sense." I think I would have liked it better than the name. What was? Well, it's just too long. It is, was it Adeline, Braylon, Charlene, Danica? And how cute is that? The third name. Yeah. Charlene, after yeah. Charlene Harris, so that's yeah, perfect. That is. I mean, the names in themselves are cute, but I'm just like. Practicality wise, hello, I'm blah 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 yes. blah, blah blah. And also nice because it didn't really you. have a, a connection, really, made, except for maybe Charlene, it didn't really have a connection to any, like Terry would have. Like, there, I don't know what connection any of these names would have had. They're except to be, Yeah, except to be alphabetical. Who knows? Cute. They may still Maybe. Take, they might have something down the line, but yeah. As as of now, they didn't have any connection to anything from the show. and the. Maybe she'll get a nickname ABC. ABC. ABC, come here. ABCD. ABCD. So anything, and I'm trying to think anything, anything else that happened with Terry, I mean, with Andy tonight, except just the naming of his daughter. Mm -hmm. With so many storylines, a lot he didn't get a lot of time tonight. No, but it, but it was still a good moment for him. Right. It was still a good moment for for him and, and his daughter, and, and Holly, of course, was also there, too. So. And they alluded to the fact that Jessica can't come over with yeah. Holly, so we still yeah. know that there's going to be some tension mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Like, Absolutely. that hasn't been resolved. Yeah, so I think it had, even though it was short, it, it was uh, had a lot going on. So we'll miss you, uh, Terry. No. Uh, uh, it's a heartbreak. We, I, I usually I like to st we start with uh, Sookie and Warlow, mm -hmm. but we just had to give Terry his his you just give his moment, <coughs> of course. So I'm, like choking on water. Well, I was it's gonna say okay. you're choking because you're so upset. You can admit it. <laughs> it's all right. I'm gonna die over here. All right, just, just admit that you're sad. Oh no! Drink, drink some of your After Buzz water and yes, let's delicious. I mean, I'm tearing up, but I just don't know what's mm -hmm. happening. And now a moment for Terry. Okay. Yes. Moving on, let's let's of course talk about the the big storyline of the whole show, the whole series itself, the lovely Sucky Stackhouse and Sarah's favorite, Mr. Warlow. I mean, what? Wait, what episode is this? <laughs> episode six. Um. Oh God. Oh wait. No. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. You were waiting 27 know, minutes to let us know long? this. I think there was a bet, and I think I won. <laughs> And I think you owe me. Well, let's Wait, go ahead and tell. Let's tell let's, I was like, I wish we could go and see. Let's you tell the six. audience. Let's tell the audience the bet. Um, we had a like sexual experience bet over when Suki Warlow meshing was gonna happen. I believe that Miss Janina and I believe we both called episode six. Yeah, you were hanging out with Janina. Well, Janina's on the show, yeah, so of she course. Had, she had yeah. Been. No. She, no. She, <laughs> I I think I I guessed five. I know you had four. Um, thank I'm you. a premature picker. I'm sorry. Thank you. 
Because okay. women understand the emotional aspect that goes along, so we're right. Well, before, well, speaking of waiting, I love how you already jumped to the sex. I'm sorry. <laughs> let, us, let us start to the, be, the beginning Fine. on the fact that... How, Rewind. I just have to prove I was right. It's okay. <laughs> the fact that Warlow went in and saved Suki from Corbett while he was possessed by Lala, while mm -hmm. Corbett was possessing Lala. Well, let's also notice the fact that Bill slash Lilith gave him permission to do so. So what does that mean? Sookie's not so dead to him as mm -hmm. was said. We know that. That in the, we, confirmed. Yes, it was confirmed. I know. At yeah, the but first more of a test, more of a minute was, that, that he was upset. He said, you know, Bill said it in a fit of anger, but okay, didn't really mean it. Okay, so I mean, it paralleled the first time, so mm -hmm. we kind of knew that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. He saved her the first time her parents tried to kill her. Okay, so doing it again. Okay, so, of course, then he saved, you know, everything's great hunky-dory. He saved Sookie. And how great was it that Sookie banished Corbett? I mean, how difficult must yes. that be? The growth. Yes. we got to think of Sookie's growth through, from season one being this innocent virgin who now is becoming this woman. She always kept falling for the wrong guy. And, and very timid, too. Like, very shy, yes. very unsure of herself in the very beginning there. Absolutely. I yeah. always yes. felt like Sookie's... I guess I've always felt like Suki had that spark in her, though. She had the spark, but she didn't quite... Today was she wasn't there was a big turn. You definitely saw yeah. that on many levels. It's maturity. It's her coming into her own. And okay. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> it's, I'm, it's, I'm thinking about it as you're talking to me, and I'm getting the stare down. <laughs> yes, but, you're, it, but you said I... <laughs> it was just very half-hearted, like, mm, I agree, but not really. <laughs> well, it's taken six seasons, but then again, it's only taken one year in true blood time, one year and a couple months. Which brings me to the point oh, where right. Bill summons Warlow, okay. and Sookie, may, you know, has they they both both es escape to Fairyland. Mm -hmm. If I can get that out, which Fairyland are they I in? I know that's what we were trying to figure that out. That's what brings me to the point. The yeah. timeline. What? How much time is going to elapse while they're in their yeah. Fairyland? I mean, I'm just I'm confused because we have to like kind of look back. Mm -hmm. The first Fairyland we went to was the one that like kind of got destroyed because the fairies turned evil looking mm -hmm. and they like jumped into the chasm and like opened the porthole and then we had like fairy strip club yeah the uh the burlesque club yeah mm -hmm. where there was mm -hmm. no time difference mm -hmm. and then also we all we get lilith in a very similar looking plane mm -hmm. as to the one that um Suki and Warlow are in now so i'm kind of like how how many planes of this mm -hmm. magical garden are there and obviously we also have the dark realm that um, Warlow, I mean, uh, Niles, Niles, in. Niles in. So, yeah, it is very confusing because there are a lot of planes going on there, and I, like you were saying, I don't know exactly where they were at today where Sookie and Warlow were. I really, I and personally think they're with suspended. Lilith. You think they're in the same area? They, it, how many planes look like that? It's, is that just like ironic that they're just using the same set? I don't know. <laughs> it's I'm cheaper. Tr I'm trying to, I'm trying to log us on to to our to our chat roll to like, see if they have budget. And here we go. We got uh, oh, Cara Danielle, our winner actually. Ah, yes. Winner. Hey, how does Sookie just some, somehow know how to tr exactly? Thank you. I thank you. I asked this during the episode. How does let me read it for our fans? Mm -hmm. How does Sookie just somehow know how to transport to Fairyland? I'm like, was Did she we miss something? when she like opened the little door into Strip Club Fairyland? But this was like a whole like. Evaporation. It was. It was. It wasn't like stepping through a see-through window or whatever. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm sure they're gonna explain it. Hopefully, you know. I mean, they're really ramping it up. As and we haven't even gotten into the, the rest of this. There's literally no, so, so much to much. talk so about. So much. We're gonna have to like speed. <laughs> We're gonna have to speed talk. So speed talk. Warlow basically again proposes to Suki, trying to explain, and he wants her to be his vampire bride to complete the circle, mm -hmm. okay. so they can be one in each other's only thing ever. Which personally sounds horrible. It doesn't. It kind of freaked like, me out a little bit. <laughs> a little too much. Well, doesn't that speak the so much social commitment. commentary? That is the social commentary how we've how we've evolved mm -hmm. from the last couple hundred years. And I love how this episode, more than any other episode this season, you it's all been about social commentary. This episode, oh, absolutely, it, especially majorly. when we get into the governor mm -hmm. and Willa. Mm -hmm. There's so much there. So there's so many layers mm -hmm. and. How far, especially being a woman, how do you, how do you feel about that? Aren't you? Ha you're you're our woman of of the panel, so. I mean, when he was giving that speech, I was like, "Oh, gonna back up, back up, get freaked out again." It was a little too much. 
Um, I wasn't seeing the enduring sweet side of it. I was very freaked out. Um, but Suki, I guess, was really turned on because she took the reins in that. And, I mean, she initi was fully initiated. I, know. I have to say, that actually surprised me. Did it surprise you at all? Like, I, I that she was so forward with that? And Thank that you. she bit him? I was going to say, yeah. how? Like, it just felt very weird to me. Like, all of a sudden, she's like, oh, I know you, you know, you know when she called herself the danger whore, which I thought was great. Love that. Um, but then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I know you need to, you know, to feed. And then it was going on. To the, I was like, where, where's this coming from? I felt like she was a totally different person there. It was very bizarre to me. So do you think she was seduced by Warlow? I mean, it, just, it felt weird. It, it, it felt weird because how can you be? I'm gonna say, it, how can one be horny at this time when you're about to die, the world's about to die, right. vampires, everyone, if and yet, be, well, if you only have so much left to live, yeah. might as well have some fun. I don't know, but I will say that because I was thinking the same thing, like, what is driving Suki? And yeah. the only thing I could think of was we did get that glimpse of her initial um, seduction of Warlow, the fake one where she mm -hmm, held mm -hmm. um, the death ball over his head where yeah. we saw her get ready and that was definitely a very temptress s mm -hmm. scene as well but this one really pushed her over the edge and she took control and honestly I was I felt awkward during the actual we hadn't seen her in this position yeah. <laughs> in a really long time though I mean seriously we actually haven't seen her like this in a long time so for all what we've said is that you know she's grown as a woman mm -hmm. yet she took a step back, wouldn't you say? I with know. Her, with her decision of falling... Well, I don't know if she fell in love. I mean, it, I, that's what I'm trying to figure out if this was her choice, but either way, if it was her choice, it was sort of an empowering thing for her to be able to be the one kind of leading that, making that decision, but oh, it's, it's okay. still... This is what she wanted kind of thing, but it, it just felt odd, the circumstances of how it all came about. I, I don't know if it was totally... like you said, It was totally her, or if there was some kind of influence from him that was... We need Suki to have a heart-to-heart -heart with someone besides Warlow. Mm -hmm. Like, she needs to have a friend or something so we can, like, I, see a little bit more of where her thing. head's like, at. Where's like, Tara? Where, where, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the thing I miss about Tara with that storyline is that she doesn't have sort of that best friend to kind of turn to anymore, mm -hmm. of, like the best girlfriend. Every conversation and I'm missing, with yeah. Suki is, like, these intense missing heated with, with men. Like, when was the last time she talked to, like, a girl? Yeah, I am missing that, like, that, that relationship that they had. Why is it? Is it because of so many storylines? Is it because of the, of the place they are in the story? Because I was going to bring up, uh, Brian Buckner actually wrote about the fact that it seems like there's going to be a lot of deaths the second half of the season because mm -hmm. he's queuing it up that season seven is, it's going to go back to basics. Back to Bon Tom. Mm -hmm. Less, it seems like less characters, so that we can, you know, have those moments we had in mm -hmm. seasons one and two. You know, so I can see that. That makes I a lot of we sense. Probably need it. I think so too, because like we've talked about previously, there's a lot of storylines going on, and it's almost too much, and there's almost too many characters to keep track of, and some have to fall by the wayside on mm -hmm. episodes because you just can't keep up with everybody. You know, but with that said, we there's have so on. much to talk about still, mm -hmm. and we still have to talk about what I believe is the change. On the, of the tone of this season. Which is? Ah, Bill. Mm -hmm. Bill. Bill becoming the ultimate badass. Yeah. Drink. Are, we, wow. are, you, are you titling him as ultimate badass? Because that's <laughs> not what I'm titling him okay. as. Okay. What are you or titling the, him as? Yes. Oh, I can think just, of something now. It's, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back <laughs> to you. Put you on the spot. No, you know what? The reason I'm going to say this, I, I just, from a fanboy perspective, how cool was that scene where he, when he made it to the governor's house, yeah. or the, I mean the vamp camp? Yeah. And he just, he oh, had the guys amazing. turn the guns tor towards everyone. Amazing. And that, that's actually, a fan had actually sent it to me that it's actually taken from a Japanese film. A lot of stuff they're pulling, they're pulling from all these genres. Mm -hmm. And the fact, those deaths, the way they went down, and of course, how he took out the governor. I mean, just that the whole, just that whole scene, just with him walking in, you know, daylight, kind of throwing yes. everybody off. They're shooting at him. It doesn't do anything to him at all. He keeps going, and then, like you said, flipping the guns around on the guards. And Oof, I mean, what an amazing! That was crazy. To, to was go like, inside, coincide like, with the when, line was great. Uh, but what does that mean? Because for him to do that, he had to drink all of Warlow's blood, and even the even the doctor mm -hmm. said that's all of Warlow's blood. That they have. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. See, so what's going to happen? When is it going to wear off? Yeah, exactly. What's that's, that's the thing. going to happen? It's going to wear off, but does he have time to be able to accomplish everything he wants to? That's, I guess, what because we'll have his, to find out. His vision is coming last. true, mm -hmm. and his discussion with Lilith, mm -hmm. and Lilith said, don't come back to me. 
So this is all on his own. Oh, she was PO'd. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I mean, so how is he, I mean, what, how is he going to save the day, you know, and now is he, I'm lost here. He's not aware yet. Of, uh, he is aware of the hepatitis V in the True Blood. Um, he I, saw Eric the production. Is. Eric no, is. Er no, he er saw Eric. all. He, yeah, Eric knows that the mm -hmm. hepatitis V is in the blood because mm -hmm. he saw it put in there. In the True Blood, yeah. But I don't think we've had it confirmed that Bill does because we saw him see the national commercial for it or the national, national news, uh, thing. news thing. And mm -hmm. obviously they're not going to say that in the news. So mm -hmm. unless he's had a vision about it, he doesn't know. He just knows that there's. True Blood in production again, and, and he just knows, you know, obviously but, that, that. But that wouldn't that be? A, that's what he didn't. He want that, or does he want the war? I'm see. I'm so confused on the storylines right now. <laughs> oh, I know. See, there's you so mean many of them. What Bill wants? Yes, of Billeth. I mean, I think that we all are a little bit because right now all that I got was he wants Jessica, and that's why he was going. He wasn't really going mm -hmm. to save anyone else. But I also think that I mean we have Bill on the outside trying to get Jessica, and now we have mm -hmm. everyone on the inside breaking out. And, ooh, I have a prediction. I will mm -hmm. hold off on what I'm going okay, to say. Okay, you're killing us. Do not for, you better not forget, Sarah Stratton. I'm totally going to forget or else, we'll, <laughs> or else we'll have to um, tweet. Oh, we can't tweet you either, see? Uh, no, so you see? have to remember. Yeah. Okay, Chat roll, remind me. About my prediction. <laughs> about, yes. about Sarah's prediction. So. Yes. I mean, I think that, well, Lilith believes that humans should be, like, sub-level. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that True Blood isn't exactly, he doesn't want True Blood either. Because he food. sees them as food. So why do they need to be bottled? Mm -hmm. He should be able to eat anything he wants. So I think that the governor well, obviously wants to poison the true blood. Mm -hmm. Bill doesn't want true blood. And everyone else wants to be free. I, that, sounds, <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds about right. Basic? There's, yeah. Uh, basic level? Yeah. I don't know. On a basic level, chat mm -hmm. roll, t let us know what you think. Tie this all in together mm -hmm. for us. Since we still have... Is it five episodes? No, we've only got ten. I forgot. I kept four, thinking it was right? a twelve season. Yeah, we got four twelve left. episode season. I left, guys. Crazy. Well, then I'm trying. Oh, okay, okay and the death of the governor. What does that entail? And we called it for last. Was it last week or the week before? That it's there's been a. Been said. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. That the baddie wasn't said. the governor. Mm hmm. There's someone else. Mm hmm. And is it Miss Sarah? Mm -hmm. oh, I think so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that be for $500, yes. you know the correct what answer, what? Sarah. Wait, what yeah. are you saying? Are you saying that there's some... <laughs> Let's see, we have you a fan... There's some parallels Your name is here. Sarah, so... <laughs> okay, we have a fan here saying, let's see, True Blood is going to drink from Warlow again, and... It, is gonna kill everybody. Well, that makes no sense. I'm just reading this live, guys, so. So basically, True Blood now equals death instead of life, right? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. We're getting a little mm -hmm. bit of switcheroo mm -hmm. there. Well, and before we talk about the governor, once again, just like Terry had his goodbye, the governor had his goodbye with Willa. Mm hmm. You know, it. it Hand on the head. Yeah. <laughs> I can. St I still love you. I know it was like that weird emotional thing. Like, okay, but I don't want to get too close because I don't want her to bite me. Yeah, it's kind of like that weird. It was I weird. Little you. pat. But that's yeah. the parable. That's what we're talking yeah. about. The fact that he wants to fix her. He does, and and like we talked about in the previous episodes and everything, that he really does genuinely, seriously care about her, and he wants to do whatever he can to fix her and bring but her back. But the but the parable there is, I, I believe, is 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 he talking about homosexuality? Mm hmm. Oh, and then he wants to fix oh, of course. her. Absolutely. That's what this whole the that the whole vampire type thing is. is right. The thing on, on homosexuality and such. And and the reason I I bring that up is because still did, he he gave her her wish. So was that enough? I mean, because it seems like right before each character dies, they atone, mm -hmm. and they they leave on I want to say a high note in the fact that he released her into the general population mm -hmm. so that Tara could teach her the ways of a vampire. And, you know, because his whole life he wanted his daughter to... But I think that also is motivated by guilt and the fact that she turned the blame on him. Like, she, Willa, in that conversation, said, it's just as much your fault as my maker's. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. saw a switch in the acting there. And so I think it, it's a step forward for him that he was doing her bidding or her wish, yes, and that he reached out to his head, mm -hmm. yes. But he wasn't, like, absolved. Like, he wasn't better. He was... He was better marginally, but he he was still doing everything. Like, he still had them all in camp. Sure. Exactly. And exactly. It's not like he opened the gates up and said, okay, yeah. everyone's free. I've changed my mind. You're right. That would be a huge uh, leap. And Scott, that let's, not, huge leap. let's not forget, he left on a high note, but remember, he did post put Nora right in front of Eric. Mm-hmm. 
and he and had Dr. Overlar mm -hmm. inject her with hepatitis V. Mm -hmm. So not the cool, not not the most sympathetic, not the yeah. nicest thing to to do to watch your sister die right in front of you. So I mean, I was trying to find the positive at yeah. the end. He is a bad. He no, had but a he, moment, he, he had but a not moment. like hating him as yeah. much. Because he, you could see that he still cared for his daughter, and which I liked from previous episodes. It just made you, you know, see that he had that that side to him. He wasn't all cold and. Cold Completely blooded. heartless. Yeah, exactly. There was a heart somewhere There was a little bit, there. tiny, 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 deep, deep inside there, a little bit of a heart, yeah. He had a little heart. Okay, so yeah. a lot of stuff going on there. So how is Sarah, because from what we saw slightly in the preview, she doesn't want people to know that he's dead. I don't know if you guys yeah. caught that. Oh, on yeah, the preview for next yes, week. Mm -hmm. which I think is definitely mm -hmm. part of the evil master plan. Yeah, well, I mean, I think Sarah's pulling the strings, but yeah. she's not the figurehead. Yeah. And <laughs> you need... <laughs> and I can't... I can't, I can't, I can't <laughs> Sorry, um, you said head, and the way Bill put the head... Okay. <laughs> yes. Anyway, yeah. but I think she has to keep him alive until she mm -hmm. can put her image with all of this. Like, yeah. brand merging here. Mm -hmm. But how? How can she assume power? How can... you? I mean, she is just... How did she come from, like, the Reverend's wife to owning a, mm -hmm. a giant camp underground that tortures and kills vampires? But it's, it's She's easy. She's manipulative. It is. It's manipulative, but she could also very easily be like, well, the governor's sick right now, and I'm doing, you know, I'm helping out. You know, whatever it is to, like, keep people thinking that he's still around, and now she's the one that's kind of controlling everything by saying it's because of him, but he's not feeling well. You can't come in and see him right now. Whatever the excuse is that she comes up with and it helps buy time for her to do whatever she wants to do. Well, so if we're speaking of manipulation and games, mm -hmm. let's talk about Sarah and Jason. <laughs> that was a great scene. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I was proud of Jason. Yeah, that, because I too. That Jason has never been, I've never seen him as much of a mastermind. Mm -hmm. And he had this plan. Warlow, you're going down, and he he had it done, but you're gonna lose a ga that game against Sarah, and she proved mm -hmm. it. She did, but he I love the fact that he like stood up for himself tonight too. Like it was a really good moment for him to have because you don't you haven't seen him really have those moments. So I love that he had that. The, he infiltrated and got yeah. in there and manipulated her. Yes, manipulated her, for her once. and then and then stood up to her too and was like basically laying it down and said, "This is it, you know, I'm drawing the line here." What did you think about his reasoning, though? Like, his re like the only thing he had against her... Yeah, the reasoning was silly, of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I mean, she had definitely had the upper hand still, so I thought it was kind of... But it's Jason. But it, but it was his... Mo he, he didn't realize she was going to be walking in, so I kind of felt like it was the best he could come up with as a Jason could do. And it worked because it caught her off guard. And yeah, she... and it caught her off guard, too, but yeah. And, of course, he's doing that to rescue... Is it, is it just to rescue Jessica or, you know, Tara and... I don't think Jason really knows everyone else is in think, there. I agree. I don't think he knows everyone's in because there, but once he does, it'll be for everyone. Mm -hmm. And do you guys find, like, a bit of a parallel between Vamp Camp... And I, I don't know if we... I said this last week, and the authority of last season? We've talked mm -hmm. about it before, Oh, I think, and... I mean, definitely, it's There's, people yeah. that go so far overboard mm -hmm. that nothing can, good like happens. But yeah. I think that more than that, we've seen relationships blossom out of these institutions and scary places, and I think mm -hmm. we got a foreshadow of one today, or, ah, or something. You're, you're calling that already, huh? You think Jess and I'm gonna go? Uh, is it was it James? James? It was James. Well, let's yeah. talk about the new and talk about. I mean, <laughs> someone with some honor, you know. <laughs> That's enough for her to fall in love with him. I didn't say fall in love. I didn't say anything. I just said relationship. Maybe they have a moment. Maybe he's a friend. I don't know, but <laughs> we saw the previews and there were more. There was more than friendship going on there. Okay, well, let's just <laughs> think about this. close friends. We've seen tons of vampires get tortured within this camp, and every single one of them has given into an animal instinct that they say all vampires have, mm -hmm. whether it be to automatically kill one another or mm -hmm. to fight for these balls. And today, we saw everyone defy that. We saw Pam and Eric, you know, turn, turn, turn it around. Which, by the way, we called that. You guys, we talked about it last week. So we talked about um, that last week. Yes. Pat on his back. There um, we go. We saw them turn around, and then we also saw this new guy, James, completely stand up and say, like, I'm I'm a vampire, I'm not a rapist, mm -hmm. and establish that bit of honor again for them, and that they are, like, real people, and, and, and good, and don't have to, like, they don't just have well, to crumble kind of Going, the going back to those political things again, and comparing it to things going on in the world today, is, like, not going with the stereotypes of what a vampire is, and 
you know, that there's more to them than the stereotypes. That's and what I thought it brought up tonight. Wouldn't also, in turn, let's talk about Jessica and that dynamic, because she, I see her, her self-esteem is so just on the ground with everything mm -hmm. with the fairies and in the fact that she was just ready just to give up like that she was more she was more willing than James was mm -hmm. you know yeah. and so what how is he is he going to bring that self value up back into Jessica or is she going to br bring it herself what's going to happen there i mean Jessica's on we all thought that she was the one that was going to die because she almost it seemed like she had a death wish mm -hmm. she just thought so lowly of herself and the fact that she thinks she's a creature of the devil. Mm -hmm. And I still think that part of her thinks that again. Yeah. So we need, maybe her and Sookie can have a heart to heart. Yeah, maybe they're, they're not Sookie. Yeah, now she can have a, a girlfriend to confide in. No, I think she's kind of reached that bottom too. She can only go up from here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying, any, any, any other uh, facts that we want to talk about? Oh, I have a quick one. I just remember from um, during Comic Con, um, it was Jess Cagle interviewing the whole True Blood cast. And they were mm. talking about interesting facts that people may not know. And this is an awesome one about Anna Camp. That she bases her character of Sarah Newland on her mom. Wow. Uh. Um, she's, I like but, that. but Jess went a step further and asked, what do you mean by it? Yeah. She's, she, well, she's a, she, politically, she said, no, she's a staunch Democrat. But just some of the things of of her character based on her mom and I'm like wow I feel like that's one of the ones that you say and then you're like but I mean obviously I love my mom so much yeah, and exactly. she's so great I mean I don't mean that in the fact that she's like an no, evil manipulative good qualities. <laughs> not the manipulative bad horrible things about her of course not yeah my mom doesn't want to torture everyone no worries like, so definitely look at rewind go to the EW interview at Comic Con with the True Blood cast it's awesome and we are really actually we're getting the hook early tonight because we ran a little late so let us, we're going to skip news and gossip, so let's just move on to some predictions, mm -hmm. everybody. And now, you're after Buzz TV. Ooh, Ooh the lights. I mean, there's so many Scary. people that are in these, like, strange positions. Mm -hmm. You're giving me the stare down. I'm just going to stare <laughs> right back at you. Okay. Um, I lost I think that stare down. That, this is my prediction. I remembered it. I think that when we saw the vision of everyone in a circular room mm -hmm. with, like, the sky opening up, I think that's in them ex escaping. I mean, we saw them burn. I don't think they're going to burn. I think something else is going to happen. But they catch on fire. We yeah, see the flames. No. I think that the they're going to be in a room together and they're not going to burn. I, it's working in my mind. They're going to escape out of that room. Switch room. All right, Scott, what do you think? Uh, what do you, what do you, I mean, that's a good point, What though. do you see the second half of the season? Oh, God. I know, well, so much happened tonight that it's like it's totally like messed up my mind from everything I was thinking because I didn't think Terry was, was going to die like that. And... Uh, I don't know. I still think Jason's in great peril because okay. now that Sarah, even more so, I think I believe it more because I'd said I think Jason could die at the end of the season because as we talked about multiple deaths, but even more so now with Sarah having the total power now since the governor's gone. I don't know. All right. I think it's going to be tough so for him much. to rescue. Okay. I don't really necessarily have a prediction, but no. a bit of a huge spoiler. And that is... Spoiler. That's right. Oh, I'm not going to say... I'm not going to say... I'm just going to tell every fan listening and watching to go to the Comic-Con second half preview of True Blood, and it's going to give you so many answers. Uh, but more than know. that, it's going to give you more questions. With that said, Scott Moore, where can they find you? Find me on Twitter at sman80, that's S-M-A-N-8-0. And Sarah, what other shows are you doing? Let the fans know. Mm -hmm. You can find me here on Tuesdays for Teen Wolf. Nice. And yeah. Steven, where can they find you here? Watching all these great after shows hosted by you guys. <laughs> and of course, you can find me at JC Rubio TV on Instagram and on Twitter. So, once again, we thank our, our earlier guest, yeah. Chloe Noel, and She's the cutest. Cutest oh, for Sarah, lover. Scott, Steven. I'm JC with the True Blood After Show. We'll see you next time. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.